Hello and welcome back to Stephen Presents. Well, last time we saw how to start a career in STEM and we debated different topics such as how to look for a job, how to prepare and how to tackle an interview process. Today we are going to focus on how some people manage to find their passions from a really young age and how they manage to train their brain and uh, their skills in order to achieve their goal. This requires great self-confidence and great critical decision-making because they have to make sure that their decisions will work in a long term even if their business or what they want to do fails. Our guest today is Dan Dogaro, a final year student at the University of Manchester who followed a semi-professional career in poker and will soon open his own business in Romania combining his passion for maths and statistics with the one for football and FIFA. Just as a disclaimer, I don't encourage any game based on luck such as poker or slots, but I believe it is interesting to see how these people think of the whole industry and what made them start in the beginning and what made them give up on this career. So for discovering these things, sit back, relax and enjoy a new episode of Stephen Presents. Hi Dan, thank you for coming. My pleasure. Tell me, when did you have your first interaction with poker? My first interaction with poker was like most people. I started playing in a holiday with my friends. We got bored of the normal card games and we decided to give poker a go. And for two or three days that's all we did for very small sums of money but we had a lot of fun. And when I got home I started to watch more YouTube videos and get more into it because I wanted to beat them. And that's where it took off and I started having a passion, let's say. And do you consider it being a game of luck or a game of statistics or anything else? When you play one time, one tournament, one cash game session, it's definitely very, very luck based. But uh, in the long run, uh, skill prevails and the better people win always. And is there a difference between the championships that are online and the ones that are face to face? At first, there's definitely a difference uh, when you go and play your first live tournament or the cash game sessions, uh, it's quite intimidating because everyone is staring at you and you don't know what to do, your hands are shaking, you start sweating and you. this is how you give off some tells when you're bluffing, when you have a good hand. But when you play like let's say 5-10 times you get accustomed to it and it's just the same, it's the same game, same rules, two cards. How was for you the first tournament? Uh, my first tournament I remember was uh, a, a very very small one in terms of money but I was very very nervous and uh, I don't think I did too good but everyone could see that I was a first timer and everyone was taunting me and stuff. They How? Were, um, they were saying, oh look the kid, he's never bluffing, he's uh, the first time, he's nervous, he's scared and stuff like that but uh, I took it like jokingly and uh, I started going more and more and they started respecting me as a player because they saw that I knew how to play. Did you do anything specific to train? I didn't I didn't really train in terms of uh, live tells and stuff like that but I uh, trained in terms of poker skill and the statistics behind it and ranges. How often? Because some, you told me that you had some scheduled uh, hours for this. Um, yeah, when I started taking it more seriously I was uh, looking into hands and talking hands with other people. I was in Discord groups and stuff like that and I was doing it for let's say one one or two hours a day. I was watching training videos, I was su subscribed to a training uh, website and that's how I was uh, I was getting better. How did you train the mentality part of the game? The only problem that I had and I think I still have was a bankroll management. Uh, they say that in order to play a tournament you have to have your money 100 binds for that tournament and I used to break that rule all the time because I would just get either tilted or I wanted to win more and that was a big part of my my mentality problems but I it's been better it's been better is this the same on poker stars or, or other websites uh, to the face to face tournaments yes it is the same the advantage with online play is that you can play more tables at a time and when you play more tables at a time and you get more hands in you can't concentrate as much on one specific hand so it's better to play a bit lower because when you are live also they say live the players are worse and you concentrate on that one hand you put all your thought process into it and you can play a little bit better whilst online you especially when you play I used to play up to 10 tables at a time you start going to autopilot a little bit and you have to 
uh, and you don't play as well. You you forget what has been played, and you don't actually see the others and you, their reactions. Yeah, and you don't judge the hand as much because you have to decide in 10-15 seconds. You don't have time to think about your decisions. And so, which one do you prefer? I prefer online because uh, it's more action packed. You play more. If you bust the tournament, you can instantly re register in another one. Whilst Live, you go there, if you bust the first hand, you just go home and you've spent two hours on the road just to play one hand. That's what I don't like, but I play live from time to time a little bit. It's more calming playing live. And has poker helped you better understand other, other skills? It's definitely helped me understand uh, finance terms in terms of uh, return on investment, uh, probability, statistics and stuff like that. And this. Uh, helps me in everything that I do. It's in the back of my mind that what's the probability to for this to happen, what's the probability for this to happen, and I take decisions based on that. And when you started, you were really young, right? I was, let's say, 16, 17. Okay, and did your parents know that you what you were doing with your money? <laughs> um, at first, they just thought that I was playing with my friends for, I don't know, sticks or stuff like that, but uh, in time I started telling them, okay, I'm going to play this tournament, I'm going to play this tournament. The stakes were unknown at the time for them, but uh, slowly and slowly they started to know. I also created an Instagram account for my poker journey, my mom, my mom found it and she saw it and it was alright. So what made you stop from going full pro? So at first it was uh, burnout because I played for three months non-stop, eight to ten hours a day, a lot of tables, it was really hard and I decided to take a break and while taking this break I uh, found out about the existence of some bots on most online sites and while th there are not that many right now and they wouldn't affect my win rate as much now I decided to stop now then to lose a big chunk of money and then decide to stop. Do you think one could see this as a full-time job? Uh, definitely, definitely. There's loads of people that uh, earn life-changing money or even living money out of it. If you have the discipline, you can definitely do it, but you have to play a lot, you have to study a lot, and you have to have a very big mental toughness to not be brought down by five, ten losing sessions. What would you recommend to someone that plays with his friends and wants to go pro? Um, at first you can start watching YouTube videos because there's loads of YouTube videos that really help beginning players understand the ranges, basic fundamentals of the game and stuff like that. Start watching these, start playing very very small stakes online, $2 cash games, $1 tournaments, stuff like that. Have good bankroll management, that's very very important if you want to make it pro. And then uh, when you reach a certain level, take some money out and invest in training sites and uh, find a group of people that's very important with which you can talk hands because whilst you may know the same things, everyone sees a hand differently and you can get very good input from that. Don't you think that it's the same risk in poker as in slots? Mm, there's not the same risk because in slots you play against the house and the house always has an edge. You can't gain an edge on, on the house unless you find a weird flaw with the with the machine, but that just gets uh, fixed really quickly. Whilst in poker you play against other players, and as long as you are better than the other player, you can win money. Okay, so which are the skills that uh, one should develop besides statistics? Massive, massive discipline. You have to not get bored, because I used to, for example, get bored that I didn't get dealt any good hands and I started playing very, very weak hands and that would uh, dent my, uh, my win rate. You have to have uh, patience for this and you have to have the discipline to learn continuously and not stop, not get burned out and don't be affected by winning or losing sessions. You just have to think of it as a massive career and not as just a single session. If you want to tell, how much money did you earn out of poker? I didn't win that much and that money, most of it is not uh, mine at the moment, but uh, I won let's say about $10,000. That's, that's, that's a lot of money. <laughs> um, if you put it that way, yeah, for an 18, 19, 20 year old, it is a lot, but uh, during a two, three year period to win $10,000 is not that much. If I would work a normal job, I would win much more. But yeah, uh, in poker things scale, you win 10,000 your first three years, then you can win 20,000 the next one, then 50,000. The more money you have, then the more skill you have, you can win. Or you can lose everything. 
you can lose everything if you don't have proper bankroll management. If you go on tilt and just blast off, uh, if you have $5,000 and you play a $2,000 tournament, there's a big chance that you're going to lose. And uh, yeah, you can definitely lose everything if you don't have discipline. Is it better to do it as a part-time thing or fun and travel and stuff or to go full-time job? Um, if you have that deep, deep passion for the game, I definitely would recommend for someone to give it a shot. Maybe start with uh, doing it part-time because you can't start as a professional straight away. You don't know enough. It's going to be overwhelming to play 10 hours at a time every day. And, and it won't be a constant source of income. Exactly, especially at first. So you can start as a part-time job, play one day, two days, three days a week, a couple of hours and build your bankroll easily. And then once you get into it more, you can transition to a full-time job. Did poker have any influence in what you chose to study for the university? Poker didn't have a massive influence, math did. And uh, because I used to be very good at math ever since I was little, I used to really like it. And But I didn't want to pursue only math further because I thought that computer science would give me more opportunities. And I, I'm really good at computer science too because I it's the same problem solving skills. Okay, then why didn't you create your own bot, then analyze how he does his moves and stuff like that? There are very, very good bots already that I I, with my knowledge, cannot beat. And I used to have uh, subscriptions to, it's called Pio Solver, in which you just put hands, ranges, bet sizes, and uh, shows you the game theory optimal output and how often you should bet, how often you, could, should, you should call, you should check, and stuff like that. And I didn't do mine, mainly probably because I wasn't interested in doing that. I found different paths, and if other people had it and it was widely available, then I could do it. Could abuse them. When you have a course or when you had a course in university, uh, did you think of how it, uh, how it would help you in building your app or doing something with it? Um, yes, not uh, necessarily my poker app, but uh, always when I, when I was choosing courses for my university, I was thinking of the end goal and what skills I would need in order for me to be a complete maybe computer scientist and to develop my own apps websites and uh, it's very good for what I want to do further which is uh, tactical analysis and data analysis for football performance. Does FIFA have any influence on what you want to do later? Mm, not FIFA uh, in particular but football. Football. I love football. I played a lot. When I was uh, little I wanted to become a pro professional footballer. I started playing for a team and I saw that this wasn't for me and that I'm much better at school as they say. But I still continue playing and I played for 10 years just because I liked going, I liked playing, I liked the environment that I was in. And how did you come up with this idea, especially in Romania where, where the clubs are not that focused on uh, recruiting the best players, they are more focused on profit? I actually see that as a good thing because in the big leagues in England, Germany, etc. People are very, very focused on data analysis, on statistics, on scouting different people. And in Romania, uh, there's no focus put on that. But I think that there's uh, a lot of space to go into. I can go there and I could do my job without too much experience and I can start and gain knowledge. And do you want to do it for a specific football club or for the whole league? I want to start and do it for a specific uh, football club. I don't have a club in mind. I would go to any club. I don't care. But I want to uh, develop that further and maybe do uh, make programs that do this stuff or maybe train people which I would send to the clubs. Is there any course or additional material besides you that you followed? Yes, I actually, when I uh, took that break from poker, which automatically was my retirement, I found a course from uh, Barcelona, from experts from FC Barcelona, which is uh, titled Data Analysis for Team Performance in Football. It was about six months and I really enjoyed that. And Was it free and can anybody do it or no? Uh, anybody can do it, but it cost... Uh, 600 or 700 euros and I thought that that would be a good investment with my poker money. So you decided that you want to do that, you took this course. Do you have something scheduled in terms of making this dream come true? I don't uh, have something uh, scheduled. I have a plan in mind. I want to go and uh, talk to football directors from different clubs in Romania and see who's the most open. I'm open to work for free at the beginning for that team to see what I can bring and after that I could uh, gain some money and maybe in 10 years when 
Football Romania would be at another level and there would be departments for that. I, would, I could be like the leader of a department. I'm a big fan of football fantasy because it combines very nicely football with statistics, uh, data analysis, exactly. And um, I, I've played football fantasy for, uh, Premier, for the Premier League for the past, I don't know, five, six years. And I really want to, wanted to play for Romania as well, me and my friends actually. And there's nothing, there's no viable product for Romania. And we decided, why not do it? I have the computer science knowledge. I found a, a guy that also wants to do it with me that has the business and the management knowledge for this. And we, we started this project and we're working with the Romanian Federation to get it going. That's great. So you have already settled down the contract and... The contract, uh, we're in the talking terms, but we're close to signing it. G good luck. But what's football fantasy? I've never played football fantasy and I don't know how many viewers have played that. So foot football fantasy for everybody, you basically pick players from uh, real life teams. It, you don't have to pick all the players from a team, you can combine players from, from England, let's say two from United, two from City. And based on what they do in, in real life, you get points. If they score a goal, if they assist a goal, if they have a clean sheet as a defender of, or a goalkeeper. And you play against your friends, that's the most fun. And you taunt them and you... I, I, I like winning, I really, really like winning. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. But I assume that it is also a learning outcome for the people who play. Because they can analyze that player is going through a rough period, I'm gonna change it. Most people that play, they pick uh, based on who they like uh, or who, who is in form at the moment. But I really, really dissect everything, look at all the statistics, look at all the fixtures and th this is how I pick my team. And when do you estimate you're gonna deliver a playable product? I hope for next year, which would be the season starts in early August and I hope that the app would be running by mid-July. Don't you think that it's a little risk or not a little, like it's a really big risk that you take not having a full-time job and going back and trying these things straight away? I definitely agree that it's a risk, but I also think that this is the time to take risks. I can't, I will not be able to take risks at 35, 40 years old when I have to put food on, my, on the table for my family. And now I can take risks because if it goes uh, south, I can still go and take and get a job. My mom can still support me for a little bit if I need. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good time. What made you uh, better take these kind of decisions? I'm not sure that I'm good at taking these decisions yet. Only time will tell if I took the right decisions, but uh, it all comes naturally. I have my uh, partner for the business with which I talk a lot. And as I said, he's really good on this business and management stuff. And he's the one handling these things. I am coordinating the app, the coding of the app. So you just follow your gut? And basically, that's it. I mean, um, you look at some data, but then you follow your gut. Yeah, as always, I look at data, I look at statistics, because that's what I really like. But uh, it's mostly gut and it's common sense. Then huh? what would you recommend for someone that wants to uh, start their own business, but they are a little bit afraid of doing that at the moment? Um, I guess the easy way would be to not invest too much money at first, so you don't have a big risk. We, we are not investing too much money in the developing of the app, the marketing. We're looking for sponsors, so we, so we mitigate our risks as much, as much as possible. And if you have an idea that you think would work, first, I don't know, pitch it to as many people, see if, it, if they would like it, and then just, just go for it. Okay then, so you have everything settled down, the business plan is going well. Can you talk us through the process of how to pinch investors, how to, get an, how to have an idea, and then how to materialize it? So I'll talk you through, the, through our process. Uh, we decided that we want to do it uh, in January. And we first of all uh, laid out a plan or, of what we exactly want to do. And then we scheduled a meeting with the Romanian Federation, which is really easy. And uh, at first they weren't so receptive. They pretty much said no. But towards the end of the meeting, they said, OK, come back next week with a more thorough uh, presentation and we'll see then, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk between us and uh, we'll have a, more, a better answer then. So we made a, I'll say, really nice presentation about everything that we want to do from how the app would look to how we would generate money and to how the marketing will go and our plans. And we presented and uh, they had a way better response then. Did you have any help? 
Um, it was pretty much just me and uh, the other guy that I'm doing this with. Uh, we asked around a couple of friends what they think about our presentations, what they would want in a fantasy game. And yeah, we presented, they said, um, they said yes, that it could help us. At first they said, oh, we're going to give you licenses and some money for uh, some percentages. And uh, the idea was that we would uh, do some simulations and come back with an offer for them. We did that and uh, they uh, changed their mind and they said that they can no longer offer us money because they are implementing VAR this season and all their money is going towards that, but they can help us with money down the line next year in a couple of years and we already get the licenses from them right now. And this is when we started looking for other investors. Uh, we also work with a company that would develop the app uh, with me as well. I would work for the, I would work for them for backend for the database and stuff like that. And this will bring the price a little bit down, but we still don't have the money for marketing. And when I go back to Romania in a couple of weeks, we have to go for, for to different companies and uh, pitch our our product and see if we can find a title sponsor. Then do you have to insist? Did you have to insist uh, to this company that you said that is going to help you out? Uh, no, we pretty much knew the guy that has the company. He worked with uh, my uh, my friend for for a little bit of time and uh, they were really open uh, and to all our to all of our ideas and uh, to the pricing we will neg negotiate with them uh, for some percentages as well, so we can bring the price down and it's going to be alright. And uh, what about the investors? There, I assume there you have to insist. Um, we didn't talk to investors uh, yet for the title sponsor, but we'll probably have to insist and knock on a lot of doors and go to a lot of companies to find one that will, will say yes, hopefully. Yeah, well, and did you consider uh, having some like open um, open investments like maybe your friends want to invest in your company or stuff like that? Well, we didn't really consider that because we would like to keep as much for ourselves as possible and this is why we're looking for title sponsor for example we would uh, advertise them all over our app and website and they will give us the money for marketing and they would not have a percentage of the app per se. And why didn't you try doing something here in Manchester or in the UK same sort of thing, not maybe not fantasy football because it already exists and you wanted to go back to Romania. To mm, first of all, is the thing that I, f I feel much more comfortable in Romania. I can't tell you exactly why, but this is just my feeling. And second of all, it's much, much easier because there's almost nothing done there. Okay. So you can really easily get into something. You can take something from, as we did, from uh, the English football and bring it to Romania. And it's... 20 years back, but uh, we can be the ones that do it. Okay, thank you very much for sharing everything. Thank you for having me.